Hello, it's me, French Ted, and we are here for our first of two 500 subscriber special episodes. Woo! 500! Just cheering on my own in the office. Uh, well, my little office slash bedroom slash spare room slash room slash. Anyways, um, this was... Um, it was kind of hard to think of ideas to do for the 500 subscriber special. I wanted to do something because I never really thought that I would get more than 50 subscribers, let alone 500. So yeah, it's pretty fucking cool. Um, and it definitely is um, what's motivating me more than I already am because... To be honest, I started uploading just because I would never stick with a TW series. I get a couple months in and then give up. Whereas I feel like if I'm uploading, I'm being held accountable. And um, yeah, I'm loving every second of it. Each of my three series that I've got going, loving them all. Uh, some more than others, um, but still loving them all. Um, and you're probably wondering, what are you doing here? We're in TW. We're looking at bloody Fred from, um, what's it called? Scooby-Doo. And we're with WWE. Like, huh? Um, the reason why we're here is I've started a brand new save. Um, don't worry, this isn't... I'm, I'm not doing a WWE series. Um, I couldn't keep up with that shit. No, thank you. Um, but yeah, we're here. Um, this is the How I Book episode. One of the ones that you guys voted for. Um, as I've said before... Hold on, I'm all over the place. As I said before, it's really hard to come up with some ideas. Um, I kind of jotted a few ideas down myself. Um, I took a few of your guys' suggestions, um, some really great suggestions, although some of them were more series ideas than one-off video. So obviously those I've back-pocketed if I do start another series or when a series ends and we replace it with something. I've got a few ideas from you guys. Um, I took to Reddit. Reddit had a few good ideas. Um, one of the most common was um, just to see how I book shows, how I plan shows, how I you know generate storyline ideas and just keep things going for as long as I have without you know hitting blocks and stuff and um, which does happen but um yeah I'll go through that all today in this episode and then the second part of the 500 subscriber special is where my fiance Spanish Alina um will have her very own episode where she will book a pay-per-view event so she doesn't know a great deal about wrestling uh she knows quite a lot to be fair I'm quite impressed when she you know, chucks a name out. Um, but she seems to know quite a lot of AEW, some random New Japan guys, a few older wrestlers that are kind of just floating around the indies now, and then a few WWE guys. So what I'm going to do for her is I'm going to create a whole new database that just has people that she knows in them, all in one company. So she's kind of got like um, a sandbox, as you can call it, um, where she can just book a one-off show, throw as many people on the show as she wants, go as crazy as she wants, um, I mean, one of the first things that she asked me was, you know, those death matches that John Moxley's in, can I book one of those? And I was like, of course you can, Elena. So there's going to be a death match or two in there. I can guarantee that. Um, but yeah, that's the second episode. Uh, in between this one and the next one, um, I'm going to have to show her the ropes of how the game even works. But I'm really excited to do that one. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give her the mic, give her the, the laptop, let her book what she wants, you know, speak her ideas out. And then I'll come in and do the show with her um, blind. So I won't have a clue what's been booked, but you guys will see it all. Uh, either way, stop waffling, Ted. We're here for the How I Book. And you're probably wondering, why are we in TEW? Um, it's because, uh, first of all, um, I'm just going to go through how I start every series. So before I book a show, do any actions, there's a number of sections in TEW that I go through in detail. Um before anything else and i'll go into more detail um, when we jump to the most broken amazing application in the world for when it comes to tw if you've seen the thumbnail you can probably tell what it is and um, but yeah we're here with freddie prince jr because who wants to be vince mcmahon or triple h or whoever um the new owner of wwe ignore all of this stuff because it really doesn't matter right now although some of it will um but most of all we're going to sit in creative and we're going to sit in broadcasting and a few areas of business management um, so just starting straight at the top, the first thing you need to do in any TW save is look at your bloody roster. 
um, and I will show you what I do with the roster but the first thing you want to do is you just look at who you've got you can jump to creative but that's not as trustworthy in my opinion sometimes you hit there you look at your major stars you say look we got four big guys these are the big guys that we probably want to focus our main event shows around and then you look at your stars you have a look at these you see okay so these are like the next big things in a way the people that can easily jump up um, in all honesty I group star and well-known together in my head because these guys are just a couple of points away they're just a, a championship win away or like a big pay-per-view win away from being a star let's be honest um, this is a kind of a weird mod this is the August mod so from August 1st but I've got it in September just because that's how I did my NWA saves this is the same instance of my NWA but yeah you just take a look at who you got who you like who you don't like um, unfortunately with WWE everyone's on a written deal so you can't just sack them off as easy so for example I want to get rid of Charlotte oh Becky's not happy with her um, it's going to cost a fuck ton of money almost anyone let's go to um, unimportant and let's just look at like BFAB for example how much would she cost still 31k I know that WWE have got 600 million um, but you don't want to just be spunking money when you don't need to oh is that Molly Holly Oh, cool. Oh, she's a road agent. Oh, okay. Can you make her a wrestler? No. Damn it. Anyways, yeah, first thing you do, roster. You need to know your roster. Um, you don't need to know it off by heart. The second part of this video, uh, which you can skip to, I'll do timestamps or something. Um, we'll go into all of that, but I'm just running through what you need to look at first, what you need to know. Once you look to your roster, you've got your own idea of, ah, oh, I really like this guy, I really like this guy. Oh, the, the brain is starting to, to churn. Oh, I can see that Cody doesn't have a title right now. I'm going to want to get Cody a title or something, I don't know. Um, and then you just jump into creative just to see what the game's telling you is are good so you can see here four main event is that self-explanatory next big things these are people that maybe you overlooked for example maybe you didn't look at maxine dupree if you didn't what's wrong with you she is mwah, chef's kisses um but it says here that maxine dupree could be the next big thing so if you look to your women's roster and thought no oh, there's not really anyone that i really want to push that's in the lower card now the game is saying hey why don't you give maxine a go <laughs> um yeah uh and um see what she does same with elton prince one half of um pretty deadly and if you jump here kit wilson is also a hot prospect so straight away that's a young tag team boom you want to push an up and coming tag team test them see what they can do you've got that maxine again is at the top so clearly she's going to be a star um if she's in both of these i'd say austin theory as well super young already pretty high up on the card um i can't see well there you can see like high 50s he can easily become a star in a month or two same with dominic mysterio his popularity is insane his in-ring skills aren't the best but again it's what you want to work with omos can do one never been interested in him um yeah and then you look at these these are your promo guys so when you think about shows that needs a good promo these are your five go-to's um showstoppers of ring generals are really good showstoppers um in my opinion i look at these and i think right if i need someone to put on a good match in our main event who could be an opponent who could feature here's five that are going to guarantee it no matter what and then ring generals are very much um the way that i see them especially ring generals that aren't in storylines are oh i need to fill 20 minutes how do i do it let's look at my ring generals cool i'll do sammy versus seth you know or something i don't know if they're not in a storyline who's hot is also important because this is what the game's telling you these guys have got great momentum um you can either use that momentum to get someone else over or you can push that momentum further meaning that these guys are just going to keep getting better and better and then who's not you want to keep this empty so if you see someone in here that's sat here saying they've got really shit momentum stick them on the pre-show give them a win against a nobody or have them you know win constantly on b shows and stuff um, and then hidden gems ignore this for now we're not looking at signing anyone i'm just looking at how i book what we've got so ignore this um yeah the next thing you want to do is just check out your teams uh you need to know who's who who's with who because you know if you're booking any tag teams or looking at tag team championships these are the default teams you can also obviously add one um, and the great thing about tw is it's got this ridiculous catalog of teams that have been together in the past so like you know when you, you want to bring diy back fuck it let's bring them back unit add team diy now back um and it's insane because say for example um, i don't think there's any here let's have a look 
just in just how crazy some of these mods are um i'm just looking at who's got low pop index i know they've been together a while there's none here but for example there could be a team of i don't know just just say Tazawa and owens because on the indies they were pretty sick um in pwg but say they only teamed once or they had one title match in pwg and that was it this game's probably got them linked as a team which is crazy um so yeah and also you don't have to follow this you can pick whoever you want let's have um i've gone blank now who should i pick i mean it doesn't really matter let's have mustafa ali and someone someone just pick someone ted and shinsuke yeah and if you don't can't be asked to think of a name you can suggest name amazing wrestlers neo new blood you know assassins you know you can call them whatever you know like i don't know high flying strong style or something but you know off the top of your head there's a bit of both but yeah you can then add them and boom there well, they were I don't know what we saved them as either way it doesn't matter um yeah teams great one of my favorite things to do is you work off of the teams you've got to begin with when you're writing your storylines and then if you're looking at them and going you know what these are a bit wanky and i've got these single stars that i'm not doing anything with chuck them together just chuck them together um and then you look at stables as well exact same thing as teams i don't like to mess around with stables too much it gets really confusing um i like to create maybe one at a time um and stick with these or just disband as many as i want like you know qtv doesn't exist in my AEW save because why would it and then finally in the creative section is titles you need to know who who has the title um and where the title is so for example that is um exclusively on smackdown there we go gunther just on smackdown so when you're booking your raw show don't bother trying to book the ic title at all or gunther because i think he's exclusive to smackdown as well um but yeah that's where you'll get familiar in your roster and we'll break down that when we jump over to the spreadsheet aka the best friend um of any tw um and then finally and i think this is very important when booking shows your product just read through this make some notes on anything that if you look at it and you go oh shit like we i have to make sure that's included every time um, you don't have to always remember that because when you go to book a show, the game will have like a little exclamation mark and be like, oh, you're missing this. So don't worry too much. But yeah, it's always good to know what's happening here because it can help really shape what you're doing, especially um, these bits here. So for events, 80% matches, 20% angles, and then TV shows, 65% matches, 35% angles. Very important. That's probably the most important thing. You don't want to go too far above or below that. Um and yeah, that's the creative section I'd say done and looked at. I'm just looking at everything else that's here. Storylines as well, we'll get to that later. But as a consensus, these are the starting ones for this mod. Um, I tend to ignore all of these because why carry on something in real life when you can just do what you want? What's the point in booking reality when you're here, the owner, the fantasy booker? Like, scrap these, do your own storylines, guys. The bloodline doesn't exist in my life let's just see you later anyways um but yeah up here it'll tell you what you need uh some companies don't need storylines but it's still good to have storylines um but you need at least five storylines with more than 70 heat which is ridiculous um and the preset is already failing this because there's one two two above oh there was three but still uh, moving on here announcers broadcasting doesn't matter too much um unless you're doing like a local to global you want to make sure you know what you're on um, but I wouldn't worry about this, especially when it comes down to booking. Um, next thing to look at is just events. Look at how many shows you've got a week. So here we've got three shows. Main event doesn't count. B shows. Use B shows for experimentation. Never include B shows in your storylines, in my eyes. This is where you try out chemistry. You see if someone's actually good enough for something before you chuck them in a, a big storyline that you're, you, know, you might have to cancel after a week because it failed. Um, but yeah, B shows are really good for that. Uh, Raw smackdown we've got that two a shows a week we've got a two hour show and a oh, three hour show uh one thing i always do um whenever i've done a w save is i just jump into here and i just go nope two hours is more than enough and then you need to know your pay-per-view schedule so when you're booking shows you need to know when the next show is um and how many weeks you've got to build to that 
Um, so for example, in this, we're starting week one September. Week one September is payback. So this Sunday, we got payback. So we've got to book one Raw, one SmackDown, and somehow be ready for payback. So that's when maybe an existing storyline might be good. Or, I don't know, you can just start fresh, clean slate. Looking down here, though, there's not too much to look at right now that matters in terms of booking storylines and booking shows. Um, it's more mainly just your developmental, if there's anyone here you want to bring up. I'm going to ignore developmental for now because it falls under the same bracket as roster. So, for example, um, Ilya, everyone loves Ilya. We want to bring him up. Um, there we go. Ilya is now on the main roster. And he'll just come back into your factoring of the roster. So let's look for uh, Ilya. Oh, he's not there because I spelled his name wrong. He's still not there. Oh, it's because we've done that. There we go. So Ilya, and then we're being WWE, you're going to have to assign him a brand. So let's put him on SmackDown, save. There we go. Cool. We can factor him in now. Um, but yeah, down here, not much else matters too much. I mean, when playing the game, you know, seeing these things like music quality is too low, you'll have to bump that up things like that and then you've got some toxic people to consider so JD McDonough's toxic so maybe we'll send him to NXT because we don't want him to be affecting our shows and sponsorships the same with whoever the fuck this guy is let's just send him down um and then Vince McMahon is toxic so let's um because he's not owner anymore let's send him to NXT because why not um but yeah now we've got no one toxic well hey but yeah little things like that um, you can just figure out yourself, but we're here to know how I book. Um, so we're going to say goodbye to TW and we are going to jump into French Ted's best friend when it comes to booking shows, booking anything at all, tournaments, etc. Um, let me introduce to you Google Sheets. Let's jump over to it. Okay, and here we are. Oh, look at it. Now, this looks like a lot of just shit, but I've basically pre-made what I do with every single save series I do. So, my AEW save, my Local to Global LLW, and my NWA save all follow this exact same layout to a T. Sometimes there's more tabs. So, for example, if I've got a tournament running, I'll add another tab and we'll have a tournament layout where I'll lay out all the brackets, you know, kind of down here all the way across or um, any kind of other, if you know, like a round robin tournament, I'll make a table so I can keep track of who's wrestled who, things like that. Um, but yeah, this is basically what it looks like. Let me zoom in a little bit because it is um, pretty small. Uh, let's go 125. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah, 125. So what I've done is I've segregated everyone out. So if you haven't got a brand split, that's fine. You can separate it however you want. As I mentioned when we were in TW, I like to group the stars and the well-known together just as top stars because any of these guys are on the cusp of becoming what I would call a headliner. Um, I have used different terminology, it's just what I use. So headliners, main event guys, top stars are stars and well-known, mid-card is recognisable and openers are unimportant. And yeah, just separate them up. So Raw, got the entire roster here. Um, Smackdown, got the entire roster here and free agents we've got them here so these guys can jump on either show as and when they feel like it this is how the landscape is in my current game obviously you know jd mcdonald and stuff i haven't you know removed him even though we sent him down um but let's just bring him back so the red indicates injuries so anyone who is injured and cannot appear on the show is in red i think that's really important to make sure you know who's injured because there have been many times in the past where I've booked a show and then I've gone, oh, fuck, this person's not available. That ruins everything. So, you know, avoid that. Uh, Orange is people who are injured but can work angles. So you can still throw them in a storyline, but they can't do anything just yet. So, for example, if you're doing a New Day-esque storyline, Kofi will be back soon. So Xavier Woods can handle all the in-ring stuff while Kofi is still there for the promos, the backup support, things like that. Um, yeah, and the same with uh, Damage Control. Dakota Kai, she's injured, but she can still appear in segments. So you can still have the three of them jump someone or whatever. Dakota can just be there. Um, but yeah, this is how I always lay it out. So for my AW, I'll obviously have Dynamite Collision. Um, and then for the other saves, it would just be one list. Sometimes it gets a bit too long here. So you might want to, you know, double up the mid card. So you might want to uh, insert a column to the right. 
maybe take half these people and just uh, you know stick them here and then we just um, merge that across or oh, well, let's center it as well come on boom look at that and then you've got your mid card you know you could do that if you want to um, I'm just for purposes I'm just gonna put it back how it was uh, the next thing you need to know this is all roster information so this is just when you're booking a show you jump here you know everything you need to know you jump over and we've got titles so these are all the titles in WWE at the moment and these are all the current holders based on men then women and then the special tournaments and special things so you can see we've got all the current champions here and this is great because if i go oh let's do a united states open challenge who's the current champion austin theory you should know your champions really but it's good to stay on track and then after a pay-per-view or a special show you can be like oh well, we can update it because now i don't know la knight is the new united states champion or something but yeah super fun oh fuck's sake uh, let's just boom boom whoa you don't need to see that anyways <laughs> um but yeah titles it's always good to have them here just because you can so the reason why i do this and the reason why i think you should do this is if you're like me and you get really into a tw save i want to be able to book shows without tw so sometimes when i'm on a lunch break at work and you know my laptop's in front of me or if i'm just on my personal laptop vibing or you know elena's watching some show that i don't want to watch but i want to like sit with her i can just grab my laptop i don't have to play tw i've got this google sheet spreadsheet which again google sheets better than excel in my opinion mainly because it's free for everyone just get a gmail account or just get an email account that you link to google um it's accessible on your phone so if you get a random idea in the night quickly open your phone up google sheets open it up go oh you know what i think shanky's gonna be my next royal rumble winner there yeah let's do that let's just book that quick and just write a little note um it's just so handy and you can do anything with this um you can change it however you want but i think this works for me uh moving across though is teams so I've kind of just merged stables and teams all together because that's kind of just how it is. And these are all the teams, alphabetical order, because why not? Um, and then we've just got every member of these teams. Uh, let's just boop that. So yeah, you can see, I mean, obviously we know who that is, but it's always good just to fill it in for continuity. And that way, when you go, oh, you know what, let's open with a tag team match. We've obviously got Kevin Owens and Sammy. Let's have them defend against someone. Wait, who are our tag team champions again? And again, if you're booking without TEW, you don't have to worry because you can jump here and go oh you know what it'd be really cool if we did i don't know street profits let's give them a title shot quick or let's open with the viking raiders 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 um and you've just got it here you've got it at your disposal at any time um one thing um a friend of mine i, I convinced him to buy tw this was like maybe four or five years ago when it was 2016 and um we did like a, a co-series i was the manager of raw he was the manager of Smack. No, I was the manager of SmackDown. He was the manager of Raw, and we were booking our own shows. And like when it came to booking them on TW and doing them together, he'd be like, "How have you got like all of this?" Because he it was on his game. Um, so obviously, when I was away, I didn't actually have the game to play with. And he was like, "How are you structuring it so well? How are you blah blah blah?" And I'm like, "Bro, spreadsheets." Because he wasn't using a spreadsheet at all. He was working from in the game, which don't do don't do at all and i know i'm rambling but don't i'm stressing it out get a spreadsheet copy this format um i can make a blank template if you want um actually i'll do that i'll make a blank template and i'll make it like a a copyable link is that what you can do i don't know i'll make it something um but yeah and you can just grab the template and follow it and i'll have all these tabs open i'll do a tournament tab as well um because why not actually no i won't do a tournament tab you can figure that out yourself it's not that hard uh but yeah this is your hub of information let's zoom back out just so you can see it all in all its glory everyone's here the mid card as you know and this is a good way as well to structure because you could just list your wrestlers but this is a good way to go well if i do do damian priest versus akira tozawa it's likely that priest is going to get pissed off if i have tozawa win because you can see tozawa is an opener and priest is a top star and usually when there's like more than one gap of criteria between them they're going to be pissed off if you lose so it's really cool to see like oh i really need a main event guy to take on 
edge you can then look at these and you already know straight away instead of taking that risk and going oh was um was cameron grimes a top guy or not i can't remember you've got the answer here and what i tend to do is after every pay-per-view um i'll just quickly see if anyone has jumped across so it could be for example austin fury has an awesome match and has a massive title defense whatever he's been killing it week in week out on smackdown and suddenly he's now one of these and then we just delete him from here and then we can just reorder this uh, so we can just go you know data sort range a to z obviously ignoring the dash but yeah you know what i mean um actually like this so data sort range a to z done and then you can just move these guys up copy paste done and now austin theory you know he's a headliner so i i think it's good to do that after every pay-per-view not monthly because there's some some saves as a pay-per-view every month and a half because your weekly popularity results on tv shows you get maybe like one point every other match or something whereas a pay-per-view if you have someone that wins a title and it's a really good match they'll jump up massively i've had people jump up like seven or eight popularity points just from that so yeah it's always good to stay on top of this you don't want it to get out of hand especially if contracts start expiring you know say uncle howdy doesn't sign on he's gone or you bring up nxt guys you're going to want to stay on top of it but yeah that is this screen it's the most important thing you could do it takes some time i mean this took a while uh, you can just split screen you know half screen this half screen tw and just type away as you go there's no true copy and paste feature in tw which does suck but this is a fun little thing you go through you go oh jinder mahal i remember him yeah he used to be you know still bad but you know a champion and then as you're typing these names it's helping you remember them and go oh you know what i actually do really like ludwig kaiser i think i'm gonna push him and it's just it's nice it's nice it's a nice peaceful thing you can do um and it really kind of drills in your roster and it gives you perspective because you can look at this and go you know what raw is pretty thin with headliners maybe i should dip into the market see if there's anyone um any free agents out there that i can sign or maybe i should make john cena exclusive to raw that way it kind of evens it out a little bit you know things like that it, it helps you kind of just take a step back and go like hold on let's physically do it take a step back and go okay raw's fucking huge i've just changed raw down to two hours the same as smackdown maybe i can move some of these guys over even it out a bit you know something like that but yeah super useful highly recommend doing this and also it's really fun to update and um if you want to make a copy of your first ever one which i did with my AEW, i had a the original document and then i moved it over to another one and looking at where it is now to where it was is is impressive but yeah this is the first screen i'm going to skip storylines now i'm going to jump to shows and events and this looks really boring at the moment but this is how i book all of my shows and all of my events sometimes i'll color code it so the raw ones i might do in red so if we just um do this and we'll just go red and then the smackdown ones we can do in a blue and then the pay-per-views for some reason i like to put them in black and then white writing just looks pretty cool but yeah and this is where i would fill out from top to bottom my shows um i'm gonna cut away and then cut back to where i've written a few um just because i don't want to sit here and think of shows on the fly because that's you know you can't just do it on the fly but this is how i lay it out i'll fill this out with just generic ideas that i have um, and come back in a moment but this is how i structure it out i think it's super easy you do it month by month you've got all of this and because you're just writing week one week two you can just highlight this copy and paste down and then you just fill in wherever your pay-per-view is so for example i know two shows payback and then i've got one one week two week three week four week five weeks until extreme rules that's five weeks to build to the next pay-per-view so i know there what's going to happen so for example if i wanted um i don't know roman reigns versus who's on smackdown see this is why it's useful who's on smackdown just pick someone uh sheamus why not you know we can do a, a program where the brawling brutes and what's left of the bloodline take on each other so i do see to signal title match versus sheamus and then i can maybe do like tables match so i know now 
that's my main event for extreme rules that's what i want so starting here all the way to here we need to book towards that and make it you know believable and make it so that it's announced and confirmed somewhere here it could be that it starts here and they get a match here screwy finish sheamus gets another rematch who knows um i'll leave that in i'll make that i'll leave that as my extreme rules pay-per-view event but i will book all of this off screen and then i'll come back and just you know show you what i've come up with but we can't book any of this if we don't know what stories we're going to have and again we jump to storylines here and this is how i like it looks so basic when there's nothing here but for example let's um just do what we said here bloodline versus is is it brawling brutes is that what they're called again my wwe knowledge isn't good i should have done the AEW. brawling brutes and that's um yeah Seamus Butch, Rich Holland. Cool. So, yeah. So, Bloodline, Brawling Brutes. That is our first storyline. So, we can make it bold. Um, or, for example, because it's on a, on SmackDown, we can make it blue. Uh, let's do a lighter blue. There. So, now, we've got a little map here. So, that means September, week one, on SmackDown, because it's blue. What do we want to happen? So, we could say, I don't know, Roman Reigns comes out. and mocks the roster you know no one can compete with me yeah something like that um and then you can either do a new line or separate it with this i like to separate it like this and then we can say sheamus comes out challenges him uh we can say uh the koa steps up main event set so the main event for that show, you know, let's expand it a bit. Um, let's uh, wrap text. Where's wrap text? Boom. Boom. So week one, that is what's happening. Um, let's have this float in the middle just because I like it to look nice. So those are two segments. And then obviously, oh, we need to then add um, Seamus defeats Solo Sokoa. And then we can get like, I don't know, match announcement Seamus V Reigns for example um, or maybe no we'd probably save the match announcement um, uh, comes out challenge yeah we, we don't want to rush into it so, yeah so that's our main event Seamus defeats Solo Sakara um, and yeah that is September week one we've got three segments there already for Smackdown done uh, let's jump over to Raw and just see who they've got. And let's just do another quick one live and then I'll I'll build out a few more here. Um, also, just realised, uh, it said that the Intercontinental title was Smackdown only, but Gunther's on Raw. So that mod is not very up to date, um, is it? Or it's just not correct in general. But yeah, let's look here. Uh, let's do not a faction one. Let's do a one-on-one -on -one thing. So, I mean, Gunther, he's part of a faction, so we want to ignore that. Um let's have the miz and actually no let's not have the miz let's have logan paul taking on chad gable because there's the whole oh, thank you and logan can take the piss out of that so we can go here and we can go gable versus logan paul so there's a lot of fun things we can do with this one, just off the top of my head right now already. Um, make it bold so we can have on this um, Logan Paul chat show with Alpha Academy. Um, and we can just say hits on Maxine, Mox Otis, um we can say chad hits paul with a german suplex boom there we go so that can that can kick off that rivalry and um, that could be the only thing that happens here or maybe we can then have a uh, like a post show reaction from gable you know no one disrespects the Alpha Academy. 
boom so that's week one uh, and then week two we can have uh chad gable hold on let's find someone let's do chad gable versus Hmm. Apollo Cruz. Apollo Cruz? No. Let's do someone up here that could get the rub. The Miz. I think the Miz and Logan Paul. That could be a fun duo. So we can say um, the Miz defeats Chad Gable. We can say Logan Paul. Distraction, and then we can say, um, um, what's it called? What do they call it when it's like out back? Oh, my mind's gone blank, you know, behind the scene, not behind the scenes, you know, not in the wrestling ring, in the, the locker room, you know. So, locker room, uh, Logan tries it with Maxine gets slapped so yeah there's another two things that's week two this can then set up um gable versus logan paul at um thingy at extreme rules um and down the line so let's say for example i don't know we could have a week where nothing happens we can maybe just have an interview with one of them um so we could just have like a logan paul um recap mocks otis on his podcast for example just a one one off thing you know you don't want to saturate the the show and then week four maybe not much happens when you could maybe get the miz involved again you know why not and then week one we could have um alpha academy versus the miz and logan paul and we can say like paul walks out on Miz mid match and um, then this can obviously lead up to so October week two is when Extreme Rules is so that can be uh, Logan Paul versus Chad Gable so Chad Gable versus Logan Paul and then we can say post match or something or like um, the Miz turns on Logan And then that can then kickstart Miz versus Logan Paul. You know, something like that. Uh, just literally off the cuff. Don't read into it too much. This could all be dog shit. But anyways, so that's this is what I do. I build it all out. We can do it by titles as well. So for example, this doesn't need to be Bloodline, Brawl and Brutes. This could just be, um, was it Universal? No, Undisputed Title. Um, and then for example, United States, we could do like, we're going to start a tournament. So we could just do like US Championship and we can just say like tournament announced and the participants or something. But yeah, that is in a nutshell how I book everything. Um, I can go into so much detail about other things, but I'm not going to because I'm conscious of how long this video is. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the video now. I'm going to go away, spend some time really fleshing this all out um fleshing this out too um and then i'll come back and just show you what i've kind of come up with don't expect anything amazing and um, don't expect me to be consistent with wwe because to be honest i don't really watch it um i'll check out the pay-per-views every now and then i know roughly what's happening but um yeah a lot of these names i don't know anything about their character so i'm probably not going to do anything appropriate with them but either way, I'm going to stop it here and um, yeah, I'll see you guys in a sec with this all fleshed out and like how it should start to look um, from your guys' perspective. All right, I'll see you in a sec. One eternity later. Okay, okay, okay. My goodness. Um, when I decided to... Well, actually, I didn't decide to do this video, did I? You guys helped pick it. But um, <clears throat> I thought about doing you know, completely new company. I didn't want it to interfere with anything to do with my current saves. And I thought WWE would make sense because, you know, we're all familiar with WWE to a degree. It's the most common one. You know, people will kind of understand the layout and everything of WWE. We all know how WWE works. 
but Jesus Christ, you know, I do not envy anyone that books WWE, it's just effort, it feels like so much effort, and I know that that's like, I don't know, like maybe it's because I'm not into WWE, it's like I don't watch it weekly, which is probably why it's harder, but um, my, like my AEW roster is much bigger than this, and I don't have a problem booking that, so who knows, hey ho, either way, um, I didn't book as much as I said I was going to, just because um, I spent way too long <laughs> deciding what to do instead of just diving straight into it but that's the fun like i literally i kid you not i literally could sit here for another four or five hours just booking shows and coming up with ideas i've already come up with some ideas here that i'm genuinely excited about um so i'm going to show them here but first i'm just going to show you this page um any of you keen-eyed folk let me zoom in again because um let's go 125 any of you keen-eyed folk can see there's a few changes already uh john cena has moved to raw um, that was something we mentioned earlier but there's a reason why he's moved there and i'll show you guys soon um we've also got some new champions you know spoiler alert um for some of the things that i've booked and um a certain miss money in the bank is no longer miss money in the bank so um yeah i've also got a tournament folder because i did start that i did the us tournament as i you know randomly decided so uh let's just jump to the storylines tab and just show you how that's looking <clears throat> so you can see there's a lot of information here this is kind of how we're going to break it up and how i think everyone should break it up it makes it so much easier because then you can go oh well this is happening this week this week this week there are some gaps so for example you know nothing happens here nothing happens here for them you know um because you don't need to have every storyline going at every point and it really helps you space it out because you think oh you know what we've got a lot to do with this that's going to take up a good half an hour chunk of the show so cool that means that we don't need as much on the blue side um but yeah just looking at this breakdown the logan paul one we kind of kept most of the stuff that we had written here um another thing that i didn't mention before which i think is really useful is book your pay-per-views first i think that's the most important thing um figure out what you want to happen on your show who you want to be the next champion who you want to be the next challenger whatever book that first and then like work backwards if that makes sense and i'll show you in the next tab because i've only booked like the first two and a half weeks but i've already got all of um extreme rules mentally booked and kind of booked here as well all of these storylines except for like one leads to a match at extreme rules so um i'm just going to quickly read through an overview of what kind of happens um for let's do I don't even know. Let's do the women's title one. You can guys can read the rest yourself. But for example, um, first SmackDown, Bailey discusses her upcoming title match as payback. I'm going to make it out as if there was already things ongoing. Um, and they have a tag team match where Charlotte and Asuka do defeat Damage Control, um, which means that Charlotte and Asuka are on top. But post match, Charlotte holds the title, Asuka's title, a little bit too long. And Asuka's like, give me my belt. And she's like, oh, okay, sorry. So match of payback is Asuka taking on Bailey, to which we get to, and Asuka defeats Bailey clean. Um, but post match, Io Sky cashes in her title, uh, her Money in the Bank, and wins the title. So Io Sky is our new women's champion. On the following SmackDown, uh, Io Sky celebrates her win with Damage Control. Bailey obviously happy for Io, but also you can tell there's a little bit of like, oh, you know, that could have been me. Um, but it's interrupted by Asuka, who demands her rematch next week. Um, but that is also followed by Charlotte, Bianca and Zelina Vega coming out, all staking their claim at a title match down the line. So, you know, after Asuka, I'm next in line. No, I'm next in line, which this boils down to um, a bunch of matches announced. So the following week, so here would have been the, uh, if I'd written it down, well, I might as well write it down. So say EO Sky defeats asuka there we go so uh eo sky versus asuka that will probably main event that smackdown um and eo sky will retain um, and then the following week will be a number one contenders match between all of these remaining women uh, so charlotte bianca vega and bailey also tells eo sky later on in the show backstage um, that she will be entering that number one contenders match and spoiler alert bailey defeats let's go charlotte uh, Bianca and Vega and then we can have another segment where um, 
Bailey and Theo stare down, you know, as in like, oh shit, coming for your belt, oh shit, you know, we're kind of teammates, but are we all, you know? Um, and yeah, then that leads to uh, down here where Eo defeats Bailey, um, but then Bailey and Eo celebrate together post match. You know, you think there's going to be some tension or something happening, but Bailey's like, you know what? I can't be mad at you. Let's hug it out. Um, and yeah, down the line, that will probably lead to like a Bailey turn or something. But for now, uh, Eo will remain champion. So yeah, that's kind of how I plan these things. We can read through as many as you know you want to. I'll just. I'll scan across a little bit because you don't need to see the pay-per-view because that will be on the next page. But yeah, if I just move across slowly, so feel free to just pause and read any that you've got. Basically, everything that's written here is going to be on the next page as well. So don't worry too much. These are all the storylines that I would add into the game. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine storylines. We, need, we needed five. It's always good to do more though because some of these aren't going to hit that criteria. But moving over to shows and events, it's going to look like chaos, but trust me, it works. Here we go. We've got the shows all in order. We've got Payback, and as you can see, Extreme Rules is already booked. Um, we haven't booked any of these shows, but we know what we're aiming towards, and that is the most important thing. Again, with this, this was booked before anything else. Um, but let's just run through them, just because. Why not? And annoyingly, I've had a good time booking these as well, so... Um, a WWE save might not be out of the cards, who knows? Um, but yeah, we open the first Raw with a match, something that I don't think WWE does too often, it's normally a promo, but either way, uh, Cody Rhodes defeats Bronson Reed, and post-match, he outlines his intentions, which are to become a world champion. Um, but Drew McIntyre interferes, or just, you know, interrupts and blindsides him with a Claymore kick, you know, completely laying him out, basically telling him, step aside, you're not worth it, stay in the mid-card. Uh, the commentary do put over an existing beef between uh, Cody and Drew and mentions their main event match at Payback. This has been a rivalry brewing in the background before the save began, you know, because it's easier to do it like that when you're booking for yourself. Um, we then get news that Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens will be doing double duty at Payback, where they will be defending the Raw Tag Team titles and the SmackDown Tag Team titles in separate matches because WWE are keen to separate the belts up uh, we then head to another match which is Becky Lynch defeating Chelsea Green who is one half of the women's tag team champions um, and Dana Brooke just comes out to the ramp and just you know little applauds Becky little clap um, to which we're all a little bit confused about um, but then we head to the Logan Paul chat show and as mentioned previously um, you know he rips into Chad Gable you know calls him really short um, you know he hasn't got the build for you know a wrestler whereas Logan Paul's come in physique height everything um, takes the piss out of Otis and then also you know kind of flirts with Maxine's so, you know kind of pisses all three of them off which results in Gable hitting Jake Paul with no not Jake Paul Logan Paul with a German suplex um, we then head backstage where Gunther gives Imperium a pep talk because they are in the number one contenders match for Sammy and Kevin Owens tag team uh, titles. Um, but then we head back into the room for just a standard match. It's always good to throw in a standard match every now and then. Ricochet defeats Cedric, you know, a nice little high spots match showing off their in-ring abilities because why not? Um, we then go back backstage where um, Chad Gable's, you know, a little bit annoyed, you know, uh, Otis and Maxine trying to calm him down a little bit. And he's like, no, no one disrespects Alpha Academy. I'm sick of it, especially someone who just comes in every now and then and thinks that they own the place when they don't. So, you know, Chad Gable, very, very annoyed at Logan Paul. We then get that number one contenders match. The Viking Raiders defeat Imperium, which means it will be the Viking Raiders challenging Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens for the Raw tag team titles, the SmackDown tag team titles yet to be decided who their opponent is. And then we end the show with Seth Rollins and Finn Balor signing the old contract for their title match at Payback. Uh, Finn Balor making a statement if we jump back to storylines, which is where we have more detail. Um, Finn Balor banning Judgment Day from ringside because he wants to do this on his own. He wants to prove that he is... Um, world heavyweight championship quality um, and then post-match as Balor goes to leave the ring Seth Rollins is jumped and attacked by the remaining members of Judgment Day where Balor comes back in and stands tall holding the belt and that is how we close Raw but post-show which um, I always use post-shows as kind of like a Twitter segments where like you'll see this like WWE.com exclusive you know that stuff 
um, where Dana, you know, kind of hits up Becky. Goes, hey, Becky, great showing earlier, you know. You defeated one half of the tag team champions. Have you ever thought about going for the belts? If you are, what about me? You know, Dana, Becky, let's do it. Um, and obviously, Becky's like, uh, I'll think about it. So that kind of sets up their storyline together. Moving over to SmackDown, though, in the pre-show, we put over on commentary the United States tournament. And we're going to jump to this. And obviously, there's spoilers everywhere in this, but this is the tournament bracket I've made. Again, it's really easy to make tournaments here. You put the two, and then you merge the two cells, and then you merge, you merge, until it kind of breaks down like this. Um, so yeah, AJ Styles, LA Knight, Santos Escobar and Bobby Lashley, Butch and Solo Sokoa, Cameron Grimes and Edge, and then LA Knight, Bobby Lashley, Edge, because there's a double DQ here, Bobby Lashley, Edge, and then at Extreme Rules, it'll be Bobby Lashley taking on Austin Theory. Um, but yeah, jumping back here, the Bloodline opened the show, mocking the roster, just saying, you know, even without, you know, the, how the Bloodline is obviously a lot thinner now, um, but it is still stronger than ever, and there's no one that can compete with either Solo or Roman Reigns. Um, so it's very much Paul Heyman doing what Paul Heyman does best, uh, of which Sheamus and the Brawling Brutes come out and challenge Reigns and um, mock them, saying, look, there's just two of you now. Um, you're far weaker uh, without the Usos as backup Roman and your weaknesses will be exploited um, to which Sokoa steps up and eats a bro kick setting up our main event for tonight which is Sheamus taking on Solo Sokoa uh, heading into our first match of the night though which is a tournament match Bobby Lashley defeats Santos Escobar moving on to the next round um, Bailey is then hyping up her match against Asuka at WWE Payback um, before their tag team bout against the champion and Charlotte. So Charlotte and Asuka do get the win. They defeat Bailey and Io Sky, which, you know, pisses Bailey off a little bit, but that's extra incentive for payback. Uh, Post match, though, Charlotte grabs Asuka's title, kind of looks at it a little bit too long, in which Asuka's like, give me my belt, um, and passes it over to Asuka, you know, teasing that Charlotte, you know, even though she's not in the title picture, she's never fully out of it, is she? Um, pre-match to the next tournament match that we have we've got LA Knight cutting a promo on AJ Styles just like LA Knight does yeah is that how he does it I don't really I'm not a big fan of LA Knight that's probably going to get me in trouble but who cares um, but LA Knight does get the win he defeats AJ Styles who in my opinion is washed up AJ Styles is not the man he was three years ago um, let's be honest he's not uh, he's bang average now and I don't know what's happened to him. Maybe he needs to hit up the indies again or something. But yeah, not my cup of tea anymore. Uh, Lashley then is backstage kind of watching on, reacting to LA Knight's win, knowing that he will have to face him in the next round, in the next couple of weeks. And then we've got the um, kind of sub-main event, I guess, the number one contenders match, the Street Profits going over and defeating the OC, meaning that they will be facing Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn at payback for the SmackDown tag team titles and then the main event Sheamus defeats Solo Sikoa and post-match Roman Reigns tries to get the upper hand and spear um, Sheamus but misses um, to which Sheamus then just bro kicks Sikoa again sending a message to Roman Reigns that we're not scared we're not intimidated and you know we're coming for you um, but that does lead us to payback where there is no Roman Reigns um, but we do have a slew of matches that were mentioned um, so Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn open the show with their back-to-back -back matches. And in the first one, they defeat. It's meant to say defeat there. I might as well type it because, yep. Oh, there. Feet. The Street Profits. So they retain their belts. But immediately afterwards, it's the Viking Raiders that come out and they defeat a very tired Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. For example, uh, timing is really important for these things. So this would have been like a 22-minute match. Whereas this one would have been maybe like, I don't know, 13 mins. Like, so you would have visibly tired Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Viking Raiders take advantage and win the belts, becoming the new Raw Tag Team Champions. Following this, though, we have the Miz TV special um, that would have been announced between these two. You know, on Twitter, probably put a post-show segment here um, or maybe a post-show here. Um, with Logan Paul and Alpha Academy, where basically they just take turns taking shots at Alpha Academy. Miz and Logan Paul seem to be teaming up a little bit here. And this then uh, just becomes an all-out brawl. You know, Logan, Miz, um, Otis, Chad Gable, all kind of fighting amongst each other, which will then set up 
um, the main event for the following Raw, which is The Miz taking on Chad Gable, and Logan Paul will be on commentary for that. Uh, we then head back to the ring where Seth Rollins defeats Finn Balor by disqualification. Um, Judgment Day did not listen. Damian Priest, Dominic Mysterio, and Rhea Ripley come down thinking that they can help Finn Balor, but accidentally get him disqualified, uh, meaning that Seth Rollins retains. Finn Balor post-match is very upset and specifically angry at Damian Priest because it was his briefcase that got him disqualified. Following on from this, we head backstage and the Street Profits are pissed. They claim that if they went second in that match, um, then they would have won. It would be the Viking Raiders that would have lost and they would have taken advantage of all the hard work um, that was put in. So yeah, they're not very happy about that. So you best believe that is not the, the last to come of the Street Profits. We then head to the women's match where Asuka defeats Bailey. A nice clean win. Um, but post-match, EO Sky cashes in uh, Money in the Bank and wins, becoming the new women's champion. Uh, we do head backstage with a little sit-down section with Paul Heyman where they talk about Sheamus and the threat that he possesses. You know, kind of hype. You know, Sheamus is... Um, I think he's in a weird limbo right now where he's definitely a main event guy, but he's not seen as someone realistic who could, you know do the big one again so this is just Paul Heyman doing his work you know talking about the history of Sheamus and his meteoric rise at the start and the people he's overcome and you know he is a threat but then he also doubles down on Roman Reigns being one of the greatest of all time um, Austin Theory comes out and says you know what tournament schmornerman I want to have a title match right here right now anyone let's do this and it is Matt Riddle that answers that and loses so Theory gets a nice win over Matt Riddle. I want to kind of book theory a little bit stronger in the coming weeks. And then the main event, it's a grudge match. Cody Rhodes, Drew McIntyre. There's no title on the line. There's no stakes on the line. It's just, you know, these two top guys just wanting to outdo each other. And it is Cody Rhodes who comes out on top and wins at payback. Following on from this, we head to Raw, where we start with John Cena. He is back. He is in WWE back at Raw and he opens the show and talks about unfinished business. He says, I'll never be finished with WWE, but there are some specific things that I'm yet to tick off my list. Um, just before he can go into a little bit of detail, Gunther comes out, makes his debut in my quote unquote series um, and interrupts John Cena saying that John Cena, you know, you, everyone respects you, everyone regards you as one of the best of all time but how can you be the best John Cena when you haven't won everything and John Cena says it's funny you should say that Gunther because what I was getting to is how I am not yet a Grand Slam champion there has been one title that has eluded me all these years and it's that one around your waist buddy so um it looks like Cena has his eyes for the Intercontinental Championship. But Cena takes a back seat now because Gunther actually does have a match. Um, so Cena is on commentary for Gunther's match against Madcap Moss. And obviously Gunther defeats him in what, like four minutes? Something like that. Um, and while Cena's sat there chatting away, Imperium take advantage of that distraction and they jump Cena post-match attack again. Gunther does not lay hands on Cena. It's very much Vinci and... Um, I always forget his name. What's Axel Dieter's WWE name? See, this is why we need this. Where is he? Ludwig Kaiser. There we go. I'll always know him as Axel. Um, but yeah, they jump him, which, you know, this all kickstarts John Cena's quest to become a Grand Slam Cena. Uh, we then head back to the ring where we've got Becky Lynch defeating the other half of the Women's Tag Team Championships. And again, Dana comes out, clapping away, applauding Becky, being like, that's my girl. Um, we head backstage though and Logan Paul is seen hitting on Maxine um, and gets a good old slap for it. Maxine is not interested in Logan at all. Um, heading back to the ring though, just a random singles match. Raquel Rodriguez taking over Candice LeRae. Raquel is someone who I'm probably down the line going to push to face Rhea. Um, but at the moment, Rhea is very much embroiled in everything Finn Balor is doing right now. So, you know, the title can kind of take a backseat. But it will be Raquel Rhea down the line at some point i'm a big fan of raquel i think she's uh she's pretty cool and when you look at rhea ripley it's very hard to make anyone super believable against her um whereas raquel's got that stature to um do it speaking of judgment day though finn berates 
the Judgment Day in front of everyone and demands a rematch, says it's not fair. I specifically said no interference. I wanted to do this on my own. You guys came out and you ruined it. So there's only one thing to do. I need my rematch and I need you guys to not come out. And Seth comes out and says, look, I will give you your rematch, Finn. You've more than deserved it. And, you know, Extreme Rules is coming up. And if there's one way to make sure nobody gets in or gets out, it's by doing it in a cage. To which that match is confirmed and set for Extreme Rules. It'll be Finn Balor taking on the World Heavyweight Champion Seth Rollins in a cage match. Um, then there's just a little vignette of Cody reflecting on his payback win. You know, nursing his wounds, saying he'll be back stronger than ever with that goal of becoming a World Champion. Uh, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn have a little cheeky backstage segment where they're relieved that they came out with at least one of their belts, um, but obviously upset that they lost um, the other one. And then it's main event time where The Miz defeats Chad Gable thanks to Logan Paul, who didn't stay on commentary too long. He came out, interfered, and it seems like The Miz and Logan Paul have formed an alliance of some kind, um, which is very, very interesting. And as we know from the storyline here, it will lead to... Um, tag team match where alpha academy the miz and logan paul um you know have a match logan paul does walk out on the miz mid match but the match probably here it sets up between these two at um extreme rules in which miz gets his payback on uh, logan paul uh, but yeah let's just jump to smackdown quickly just see what i've booked and then we'll kind of just review everything um, so in the pre-show, the final first round tournament matches take place tonight and we open with one of them where Edge defeats Cameron Grimes. Following on from that though, Io is doing her celebration that we've already mentioned before and is interrupted by Asuka and half the women's rock locker room. Uh, the Asuka rematch is confirmed for next week and a number one contenders match is for the week after. So obviously the Asuka match will be here and then week four Smackdown it will be the number one contenders match. Um, we then get the Unholy Union, which is uh, Alba Fire and Isla Dawn, just to think some local talent, you know, get them on the show. Probably wouldn't get the highest of ratings, but it's a good little litmus test um, and just a time filler. Uh, Sheamus then has words with Butch backstage saying, yo, we need to get one up on the bloodline, defeat him. You can bring the US title in. I'll bring the Undisputed title in. We got this. Um, Street Profits get a nice, um, very convincing win. Uh, over two members of the LWO, probably, um, what's his name, Cruz del Toro and Joaquin Wild, is that his name? I don't know. Um, and then post-match, you know, Montez Ford is pissed. He calls out Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn saying, yo, other way round, we'd be holding belts right now. That's why we deserve a rematch. And what better kind of match to do than a ladder match? So they challenge him to a ladder match at, at Extreme Rules, which later on is confirmed to be happening. Um, another random match, Karrion Cross defeating Dolph Ziggler. Um, I love Dolph Ziggler, but I think he's very much an enhancement talent now, so I'm just going to use him to get other people over. Karrion Cross is one of them. Uh, backstage, though, Bailey tells Io that she'll be entering the number one contender scramble um, in a couple of weeks' time, and as we already know, Bailey wins that, heading to Extreme Rules. We then get the main event, which is Solo Sokoa taking on Butch in the US title tournament, and it ends in a draw due to count out. Solo Sokoa putting Butch through a table with a crazy Samoan drop, you know, kind of taking both of them out. Um, Sheamus comes out to help Butch post match, to which Solo gets up and tries to attack Sheamus, in which Sheamus attacks Sokoa and puts him through a different table, you know, kind of leading to that tables match thing. Roman Reigns comes out, but he's a little bit too late and just looks on in pure anger. You know, he he now wants a piece of Sheamus um, and of which in the next couple of weeks we will, or probably the next week, we will confirm that tables match um, between them. And then post-show, we just get Edge reacting to automatically heading into the final. So Edge is like, yo, I get a week off. So next week, it's going to be Lashley taking on... Um, someone la night to wit of which lashley's going to win and then lashley will defeat edge as well in the final heading to extreme rules but if we zoom out just a little bit you can see um i haven't filled everything in this took me way too long not gonna lie um but we can fast forward to um extreme rules just to see where my brain is heading and we would open with the world heavyweight title which finn Balor does get the win um, I'm thinking Demon Balor, because why not? Uh, gets the win. He defeats Seth Rollins, finally becoming the world champion, which I think they should have done 
in real life um but hey ho uh, a cash in is teased you know damien priest comes down on his own as the cage is being lifted and you can see as balor is looking or balor is like looking on in fear as in like no don't do this but instead it is priest that helps balor to his feet there's no cash in he is loyal for now um and yeah that's a great way to open the show we then get bobby lashley defeating austin theory um yeah for the united states title austin theory i wanted him to drop the belt just because i want a bit more flexibility with him i don't want him having to be in a title feud all the time i want him to be a little bit more free with what we do in the future um, we then get a backstage segment where miz and logan paul discussing tactics of course their match um in the lead up is a no disqualification street fight so miz is definitely like hey i've got your back bro i'll be there xyz you know and um, following on from this we do have ko and Sami Zayn taking on the street profits and it is ko and Sami Zayn that get that win so unfortunately street profits are still titleless uh, we then get a simple singles match eos guy defeating bailey and of course we think there's going to be some kind of turn but no and um, there is a post match not hugh a post match hug between damage control members which is nice to see we then get the big one which i was tempted to put as the main event but you know you can't i don't like not putting the world title as the main event even though i've did that at payback but shut up uh gunther defeats john cena in you know an amazing match i'm hoping that would be um and john cena kind of gets up offers a hand shake to gunther to which gunther kind of just looks at him and is like no not yet um sheamus then recalls his last title win nice little promo in a tables match i think might be wrong here i think the first world title sheamus ever won was a wwe title against john cena and that was a tables match so kind of a nice callback i guess you know we just did that out of the blue and it's worked out pretty well um and then we're heading to the kind of toilet break match i don't know is that harsh yeah um becky and dana brooke defeat um green and deville there's so many typos here but that's what happens when you, your brains are churning um yeah they defeat them and it's a tornado tag match and it's not really that extreme but it's a little bit more extreme uh and obviously you know dana brooke is now a champion with becky lynch so i'm hoping that all of the becky stuff you know ups dana's popularity because i'm a big fan of dana um and i know that she's not part of the company anymore need as is half these people because there were the big releases recently but hey ho who cares we're fantasy booking here fantasy booking um and then we've got the match that i imagine most people would be excited for uh chad gable defeats logan paul and uh, because the miz attacks logan paul um miz isn't siding with gable he just doesn't like logan so uh yeah logan's got quite a few enemies now um and then i think this would have been his first pay-per-view loss no it wouldn't have no no is it logan paul he beat ricochet who else has he faced i don't even know i don't yeah i ain't got clue i don't know why i'm trying either way logan paul loses um head backstage though john cena reflecting on his match against gunther saying he's not done with gunther he had one hell of a match with him cena's chest is like red raw and he's like gunther baby like that's not the last of me that you're gonna see i'm sticking around until that belt is mine so yeah this will be a nice long-term feud heading to whatever the next big pay-per-view is and then finally roman reigns sheamus you know everyone gets involved sokoa's there paul Heyman does some random shit um butch is there uh is it ridge holland he's there as well but it does end with roman reigns planting sheamus through a table to retain his undisputed championship um down the line sheamus is never going to win that roman reigns is probably holding that until wrestlemania um to which it will probably be gunther maybe because i think down the line cena will probably take that icy title um and i think gunther's the guy to really take it from him um not cody i'm sorry not believable for me but yeah um that's kind of i don't know if i've done a good job of explaining but i think the biggest takeaways are get all of this shit down you need this you need this down no matter what update as you go so you can see here as they won the titles i updated it so you know eo sky so you're never behind on anything if you know a tag team decides that they're not a team anymore like um the usos are still listed as a tag team but i probably wouldn't use them as a team um you just go boop see you later and now you know oh they're not a tag team anymore genius um and then of course it's like say oh randy's back just there we go randy's back now so now i know i can start using him 
yeah make that makes sense storylines i think this is a really fun way to lay things out because then you can be like yo look at all this shit i've got going on weekly because one of the hardest things especially with a wwe save and especially if you don't make this two hours if you make this three hours you're going to need another four or five things down here it's ridiculous um but at least when you do this i look at all my reds so i've got uh one two segments here three four five six seven maybe a push eight nine that's nine segments already oh and then here we go owens and zane reacting viking raiders that's 11 segments i've already got and i haven't even booked a show yet and then we look to SmackDown, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten segments. That's ten and eleven segments already booked, and I haven't even booked them yet. Does that make sense? Um, so yeah. The the long story or the, the short story of this is simple. Spreadsheets. Spreadsheets are your best friend, it keeps everything in order. Um, and what's amazing is it can evolve. So, for example, this is called women's title. There's I haven't specified anyone here or anything like that. As soon as someone wins a title, you just carry on down here. If a storyline ends, that's fine. If this ends and we're moving on to Roman Reigns again, um, you can just go Bloodline versus someone else. Uh, I don't know. Versus Brock Lesnar. And then you just pick it back up like or you can just do a little gap so say it ended here we'll go here and then you can do bloodline versus xyz starts or just delete it so you just go boop there we go let's start another one but then it starts all the way down here and the further down you get you can do the whole what is it freeze pane wherever that is how do you freeze view freeze freeze top two rows there we go never gonna lose it See that? Genius. And the way that um, this works as well is you just keep going. So I can grab this. I know the extreme rules will be there, but let's go like, I don't know, this far down. And then we can go November. And then we go here. And we can go, oh, maybe not that far. We'll go here. And then we'll go December. And then you can just fill in the gaps as you go. And it just becomes an ongoing thing. And the great thing about spreadsheets is like it's infinite i know we're at a thousand but look let's add a thousand more rows fuck it and there we go we've got another 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 look we've got ten thousand rows now hopefully you don't need to go that far anytime soon but there's a potential like my AEW one i do it yearly so when i hit 2024 i started a new sheet and went from 2024 onwards so um have i hit 2024 yet i have in in real time sorry i booked so far ahead in that AEW series, I think I'm in like June 2024 now in terms of what I've booked. Um, and the same with LLW. I don't know where I'm at, at LLW right now in terms of uploads, but um, I'm in December now of 2025. 20, so yeah, you know what I mean? There's, um, and I do this with all of them, even though um, they're a lot shorter than LLW, it's four shows a month, and then every two months or so it's a pay-per-view. So there will just be four of these, and then it'll be like October, another four. It's just easier. It looks incredibly stressful and in-depth. Like, you show someone this, and they think, all of this for a bloody game? That's ridiculous. But in your eyes, when you break it down, you go, this is so structured. If I want to know what's happening in my Chad Gable-Logan Paul feud, this is what's happening. And what do I want to happen next? What happened last time? Oh yeah, let's just read. Instead of, like if you didn't have this and you were booking just off this, you'd have to be like, okay, where where's he mentioned? Okay, there's a Gable bit here. Is there another Gable bit? It's a lot of effort. And if you didn't have a spreadsheet, you'd have to go into TW, show history, scroll through that. It's a nightmare. So do yourself a favor, make a spreadsheet and fall in love with it. <laughs> I feel like this is an incredibly long video, but yeah, make a spreadsheet. I can't say that enough. And if you guys have got any specific questions about anything at all related to TW, whether it's how I book or if you want to learn about something else, um, 
anything TW related, just drop me a message in the comments. I'm more than happy to answer and do my best. I'm quite active in the um, Fantasy Bookers subreddit. Whenever anyone posts a question about TW, if I know the answer or I can give any guidance or help, I always try to, or just give my opinion, I do. Um, so yeah, just drop me a line and I'm more than happy to respond to everyone and anyone. Um, but yeah, I quite enjoyed booking these to be fair, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to carry on though because WWE is mad stressful, so yeah. But um, I tried not to use favouritism either, like I really like the Viking Raiders. I think they are one of the best tag teams in the world and people are going to scoff because they might have only seen the WWE version of them but I've been following them, or I was following them, back in their New Japan days, um, and when they were War Machine, and my goodness, you check back and watch some War Machine matches, and you'll lose your mind, um, but yeah, again, I'm waffling, I like to waffle, I like to just talk, uh, but I think that's the end of this one, if you do have questions, please drop it down below, if you want me to do a follow-up on anything specific, let me know, um yeah this is the first part of the 500 subscriber special done part two will be up hopefully a week or two after this one because it still needs to be recorded we still need to find time we've got a little baby girl now um and thank you for the congratulations that i've had sporadically from people it's very much appreciated she's awesome um snuck in a little wrestling themed name as well Shh, don't tell anyone um as well uh so yeah cool i think that's it yeah thank you uh please like comment subscribe do whatever it is you usually do because it seems to be working and i'm loving every second of uploading and replying to you guys so um here's to the first 500 and here's to the next i'll see you guys in the next one